This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello and welcome to this lecture. We will be talking about uh, reusing the treated wastewater in irrigation. So as an overview, the treated wastewater could be used for irrigation. So we have this option of reusing our effluent, our treated effluent in irrigation instead of uh, disposing the water. It provides a valuable source of water. We will see later on that this water has some rich nutrients uh, that could be uh, that could have some benefits for the crops. Uh, but there is always a but. Um, this water requires uh, some effective measures to protect public health and the environment. So. After all, it is uh, a wastewater, and uh, uh, it has some. It could be infected. It could have uh, some bacteria, some viruses. So we have to follow some strict uh, guidelines and uh, regulations. So for the regulations, we have three main sources. Let's say. Uh, for guidelines and uh, regulations. We have the WHO guidelines for wastewater use in agriculture. We have the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization uh, guideline for uh, agriculture use. So the FAO is part of the UN. And also we have the American US EPA guidelines for water reuse. Also, uh, in the countries where the uh, wastewater is allowed to be reused for irrigation, you have some national guidelines, but all these guidelines are uh, taken from one of these uh, uh, organizations. So countries, uh, they have their own regulations and guidelines, but everything is based on uh, one of these uh, three organizations. Now, what are the benefits of uh, reusing this water? Uh, first, we are providing a new source of water. Therefore, we are fighting scarcity. You know that water is becoming more and more scarce uh, everywhere in the world, uh, especially in some uh, arid areas like uh, in the Middle East. So reusing this water is very important. Also, this water is rich with uh, nitrogen with phosphate and with potassium so no need for uh, fertilization you know that um, a fertilization are made of uh, these three uh, chemicals so as we have already seen that uh, the wastewater is rich with uh, these through these three uh, nutrients but of course you will uh, see later on as we progress in this uh, chapter or in this uh, lecture that the excess of these uh, nutrients could cause harm for the nature. And also you have the option of marketing the effluent. You can sell uh, the effluent if uh, this is an, possible in your area or in your country. Now, what are the risks? Of course, we have many risks. And as I have said, after all, this is a wastewater. Even if it is treated, it uh, still has some risks. First, if it is poorly treated, we have a human, animal and environmental health hazards. We also have some crop productivity and quality hazards. Uh, some uh, crops do not need uh, uh, high levels of uh, nitrogen, potassium and phosphates. Therefore, uh, this wastewater is not suitable for all types of crops. We have also a risk of cont contamination with bacteria and viruses. And for that, um, most of the organization usually use the total coliforms and fecal coliform organisms uh, as an indicator for microbiological contamination of wastewater. 
So therefore, removing uh, the bacteria and viruses and removing the total coliform and fecal coliform of the water is one of the major indicators if our water is suitable for irrigation or not. Now, one of the main drawbacks of reusing the, the wastewater in irrigation is the cost. You know, we have already seen that we have many stages to reach a, a good quality effluent. And as we uh, go from one stage to another, we have uh, more and more costs. Therefore, to improve the water quality, the better the quality of the wastewater, the higher is the cost. Therefore, sometimes you might drop the idea of reusing the water for irrigation just because it is very costly and it is expensive. Now, let's go through um, each parameter and uh, try to understand what does it uh, cause or what is the significance for the wastewater reuse. Now, first, if our water has a high TSS, for example, this will lead for the uh, clogging of the irrigation system. So this is uh, the main problem of the high TSS. That's why we need to lower it for uh, less than 30. The lower, the better. And also it can be related to microbial contamination. We have also the uh, BOD, the COD, those organic matters that can lead to depletion of oxygen. This is one of the uh, major problems uh, of the BOD, for example. Uh, it will cause eutrophication of, uh, for example, of the uh, surface water if, if we are discharging this water into a surface water. So for irrigation, excessive amounts will cause problems but if we are in the acceptable range uh, there is no problem uh, in reverse it it is beneficial also we have these uh, three nutrients nitrogen phosphorus and potassium uh, also when discharged when discharged into the aquatic environment they will lead to eutrophication so the depletion of oxygen uh, within the surface water but in irrigation, they are beneficial nutrient source, as we have already seen, they can replace the fertilization. But the nitrate, especially the nitrate in excessive amounts will lead to groundwater contamination. Now, you know that when we are, uh, when we are irrigating, so let's say we are irrigating these crops, okay, and uh, we are using a uh, wastewater, a treated wastewater. Okay, so uh, this wastewater will irrigate the crops, but eventually they will go uh, down. And if we have a groundwater under this plantation, uh, eventually they will contaminate this groundwater, uh, especially if the nitrogen uh, has um, uh, high levels or if we didn't remove uh, or if we didn't lower the value of nitrogen within some acceptable ranges. Also, we have the problem of heavy metals like cadmium, uh, zinc, uh, uh, nickel, for example. These are toxic for the environment. And also, if our water has high TDS, so uh, if our water has a high uh, salinity level, uh, you might consider uh, dropping the idea of irrigating because to lower the TDS we have to use uh, a reverse osmosis system which is very expensive uh, and requires high maintenance and high uh, energy consumption. So if you find out that the water has high TDS uh, maybe it's better to drop the idea of irrigation. Now let's check what are the irrigation techniques that we can use when we are irrigating with a treated wastewater. So first, what are the restricted irrigation techniques? So these are not purely restricted, but you are not advised, for example, to use a hose irrigation. Why? Because there is a direct contact between this water and the user. So 
you might have a high risk of uh, contamination uh, if this wastewater is not well treated. Also for the spray and sprinkler irrigation. Also some regulations, they do not purely or 100% restrict uh, these techniques. But as you can see that these irrigation techniques, we have uh, droplets that uh, are in the air. We have these uh, aerosols that might contain viruses and bacteria and uh, they might expose the crops. So if we have uh, crops on these uh, plantations, so we might have also a direct contact, co contact uh, between these crops and the water. And also we might expose the nearby population uh, to these aerosols. And if this water is not well treated also, uh, it might contain viruses and uh, bacteria. So if you want to, to use such techniques uh, of irrigation, the water must be highly and very highly uh, treated. Now, the allowed and the safe irrigation techniques are those irrigation techniques that are not in contact with the crops nor with uh, human uh, and uh, uh, other uh, species. So we have the subsurface irrigation so we are talking here about the subsurface drip irrigation. As you can see, we have uh, a pipe, a perforated pipe under the plantation. So uh, there is no contact with the atmosphere, nor with the crops, uh, nor with uh, any human being. So it is under uh, the surface. And this is the safest te technique ever. And also we have a very high efficiency, a very high irrigation efficiency. Uh, there is no evaporation. There is no loss of water. So this is practically the safest technique for irrigation. Now we have the uh, surface drip irrigation, as you can see. Uh, these are also perforated pipes, but on the surface, these also are safe to use. Now we have also a third technique which is the furrow irrigation technique. As you can see um, we have a, a like a heavy uh, irrigation for crops that require a lot of water. Uh, this is not an efficient uh, technique at all um, but talking about safety as you can see there is no contact uh, between the water and the crops and water and human beings. So practically it is safe, but uh, not really efficient compared to the other techniques. Now we will take an example of uh, regulations, uh, which is the US EPA. We will go through their uh, regulations and their recommendations. So as we all can see, we have here a table and we have four columns. The first column is about the types of reuse or the types of crops uh, that uh, will be irrigated, the treatment processes, the reclaimed water quality that we must, we must reach in order to reuse this water for irrigation, and also the reclaimed water monitoring or the water tests we must perform on our uh, wastewater effluent to see if it is suitable or not for reuse. Now you have also to consider uh, this um, when you are doing your budget because these tests are um, they are a little bit expensive and when you see the uh, there is a high frequency of uh, tests some will require a week a weekly uh, testing others continuous, others daily. So you might consider this um, uh, in your budget to see if it is feasible and suitable to reuse the water for irrigation or not. Now let's uh, go uh, to the first row, um, which is irrigating landscaping crops. For, so for example, uh, golf courses, uh, parks, cemeteries, so uh, any crops uh, that are used for landscape. Now you can see that uh, it requires uh, a high treatment uh, for the wastewater, secondary filtration and disinfection. So secondary and tertiary 
treatment, advanced tertiary treatment, and the reclaimed water quality, uh, the, uh, the pH must be between 6 and 9. Usually, we don't have a problem with the wastewater's pH. It's usually uh, around 7, uh, but uh, this depends on um, maybe sometimes the usage of uh, some chemicals or if the wastewater is being contaminated uh, with uh, chemicals that uh, have uh, low pH. Also, the BOD must, must be less than 10, so this is uh, pretty much a strict uh, requirement. Uh, less than 2 NTUs for the turbidity, so the water must be very clear. No detectable fecal coliform per 100 milliliters, so zero fecal coliform. So therefore, we must use a, an advanced tertiary treatment for this infection. And also, uh, we must have a minimum one milligrams per liter of uh, chlorine as a residual chlorine. Now, we must also test the pH weekly, the BOD weekly. Continuously, we must test the turbidity, daily testing for the coliforms, and continuous testing for the chlorine, uh, the residual chlorine, and the water. So, as you can see, this is uh, some high requirements for landscaping crops. Why? Actually, because those crops might be in direct contact, contact with the humans. So, for example, if you go to a park and sit on the grass, that is being irrigated with uh, treated wastewater. So there is a direct contact be between you and this grass. Therefore, we must highly treat uh, this water. Also for the second row, for the crops, the food crops now that are not commercially processed. When we say not commercially processed, so uh, these crops do not undergo sterilization. And also for the crops that use surface or spray irrigation. So these uh, require, uh, you will see now, uh, high treatment uh, processes. And also for the crops that are eaten raw. Now the US regulations, they allow the irrigation of wastewater for the crops eaten raw. Some other regulations uh, prohibit, totally prohibit the irrigation of such crops, even if the water is highly treated. Now, as you can see also the same uh, uh, requirements as for the uh, landscaping crops, very high requirements, uh, secondary treatment and filtration and disinfection. So uh, this is uh, uh, costly, but at the end of the day, of course, you will get a very high quality uh, effluent. Also the same um, requirements for the water quality as uh, before and also the same monitoring uh, requirements. So these two types of uh, crops, so whether uh, it is landscaping, irrigation or food crops that are not commercially pro processed, they have both high uh, treatment requirements because they uh, are in direct contact with human beings and therefore a lot of precautions must be uh, taken. Now for other types uh, of crops, uh, for example, the agricultural reuse for foods that are commercially uh, processed. So as I have already said, the uh, crops will undergo sterilization. So also, we need secondary and disinfection, but notice in this case, there is no need for, fil for filtration. Uh, you can see that the pH required is between 6 and 9. Uh, less requirements for the BOD, it has to be less than 30 compared to up, uh, it was less than 10. Less than also 30 milligrams per liter for the suspended solids, less than 200 uh, fecal coliform per 100 milliliters and one milligram per liter for the chlorine residual. Also for the monitoring, we need to monitor the, the pH weekly, the BOD weekly, the suspended solids daily, the coliform also daily, 
and the residual chlorine continuously. Now, if you are irrigating non-food crops, like for example, pasture for milking animals, fodder, fiber, and seed crops, so, um, so for crops that will be used uh, as uh, animal food, also the same requirements as, uh, as up, so secondary and disinfection uh, treatment, uh, same uh, water quality requirement as for the food crops that are commercially processed and also the same uh, water monitoring. Now let's take uh, an example of a national guideline for wastewater use, which is for the Lebanese country or Lebanon, a country of the Middle East. Now, as you can see that, that these regulations are based on the FAO regulation of 2011. Also here we have uh, crops uh, that are classified in uh, classes. So we have three classes. And I have to mention a very important note. Note, irrigation of vegetables eaten raw is not allowed. So um, whatever the quality of the uh, treated wastewater, you are not allowed, allowed to use the wastewater effluent for irrigation. So this is highly restricted. Now, let's start by the... Uh, classifications or the crops classes for the first class for the irrigation of crops that are eaten cooked or the irrigation of greens with public access so for landscaping crops the proposed treatment secondary filtration and disinfection now let's go for the uh, required parameters. The BOD must be less than 25. So this is less strict compared to the US EPA. It was less than 10. The COD less than 125. The total suspended solids less than 60. For the pH between 6 and 9. The residual chlorine between 0.5 and 2. The NO3N or the nitrate nitrogen must be less than 30. The fecal coliforms per 100 milliliters less than 200. And for the Hellman's egg per one liter, it must be less than one. So the Hellman's eggs are the parasitic worm that might cause the disease of Hellman theasis. Now let's go to the second class or class two for the fruit trees, irrigation of greens and with limited public access. So for the landscaping crops that um, uh, people cannot reach and also for impoundments with no public water contact. So the proposed treatment secondary plus storage or maturation ponds or infiltration percolation. For the BOD, it must be less than 100. For the COD, less than 250. For the TSS, less than 200. For the pH, between 6 and 9. For the residual chlorine, it has to be around 0.5 mg per liter. The NO3N, less than 30. For the fecal coliforms, per 100 milliliters, less than 1000 and for the helmets egg per one liter less than one. Now a third class, which is the cereals, the oil plants, fiber and seed crops, canned crops, industrial crops, food, fruit trees with no sprinkler irrigation, nurseries, greens and wooden areas without public access. For the proposed treatment, we have a secondary plus storage oxidation ponds. Uh, we have a similar requirements as class two, but for the fecal coliforms, non-required.